couple minutes late probably. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Very good. Okay. I was just saying to everybody that I apologize for being late. Um, we do pray also here at 5.30, and I moved it up a couple minutes, but just a couple minutes late will probably be the norm for the month of June until the prayer time starts to slide back. Um, as you can tell, we're also trying to transition to being hybrid, all right? So we have, we will have the Zoom, this class on Zoom, and we will also have it on the live stream, but I'm no longer in the office, as you can tell. Um, so we are trying to encourage people if you're able to, to come down to the masjid, inshallah, uh, and also participate in person. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa mursaleen nabiyina wa qudwatina muhammad alayhi afdur as-salaa wa aska taslim. Allahumma alimna bima yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilman ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everybody. Welcome back after a long break from Arabic. Um, Insha'Allah, hopefully, you had a little bit of opportunity to review something over Ramadan and the Eid break. And if not, no problem. We're going. We are going to pick up where we left off. So I'm not going to do a proper entire review. However, uh, we'll be taking it kind of easy for the um, first couple lessons as we kind of ease back into um, familiarity with our book, familiarity with the lesson, the lessons that both we are learning currently, and the um, lesson that we had left off on. Okay, let's see here. We've got the share going on. And please, if somebody notices any technical difficulties, then like make me aware in the chat. Um, trying to live stream and also do Zoom at the same time. Sometimes it's a little bit more than the connection can bear. So if something starts glitching, I tend to prefer to sacrifice the live stream at the expense of the Zoom, uh, because obviously that's where you all can see the book and everything else. Okay, so everybody's able to see now. B. That's interesting. Okay. Just a second. I'm having a little bit of an issue here where when I start to um, manipulate what's going on on the screen, all my other controls fall away, such as the chat and everything like that. Is everyone seeing the screen clearly? Everyone seeing everything? Okay. Very good. So we had really left off at this lesson 10. And lesson 10 was a step up or two in difficulty. Uh, alhamdulillah, the author of this curriculum has made everything cumulative. So things are building upon each other. Right, we're bringing along pretty much everything that we've learned before in every subsequent lesson that we're doing. Okay, so simply by advancing 
you know, it doesn't warrant an entire review going back to the beginning. We're going to be going over some of the things that we have learned previously in this conversation. This conversation is very long um, and it's only going to get longer, as you'll notice, once we get into the lesson a little bit, once we start describing um, our house and where it is. And we're going to be saying we completed everything in lesson 10, even Okay, let me just double check because I remember we did the this and this and this. And then we were doing the exercises. Did we get as far as this exercise going from qalamun hada qalami, hada qalamuka, hada qalamuhu, hada qalamuha? We did all that. Is that true? That was the one thing I didn't do. I was reviewing the book and I thought, you know, I should go back and look at the last video um, to see exactly what was the last lesson that we covered in that. I, I think we just did this page. We just did this page. Okay. Because then after what comes after this is again, another step up uh, of the page that you're trying to show me on the video, which is, Oh, sorry. Yeah, actually, we also did. We did the fill in the blank. So we had to do the next one, which is Hati uh, Khamsata, whatever this is. Oh, I guess you have to give five nouns or something like that. Okay. So this Hati um, Khamsata. Okay, let me... Oh, I, I think my book is different. <laughs> sorry. Uh, my book doesn't match this. No problem. So, uh, Mohsen, I'm unable to see exactly what's written on your uh, on your book. Are we able to pin down whether we did this exercise or not, where we basically changed nouns to reflect different um, people possessing it? I don't think so, we did this. I don't recall doing this either. So for example, we're taking qalamun, a pen, and then we are making it ma'rifa, we are making it definite by making it possessed by different types of people. Hada qalami, this is my pen. Hada qalamuka, this is your pen. Hada qalamuhu, this is his pen. Hada qalamuha, this is her pen. I don't recall doing that. Um, does that sound? Yeah, I think we didn't do it because I haven't written the answers here, okay. but I have written feminine next to a couple of the nouns. So I don't know whether you went through it, maybe, okay. because I've, I've put an F next to a couple of nouns. Very good. Well, I don't think there's any harm in, in backtracking just a little bit to start this lesson from the beginning. Um, it will kind of be, it will serve as our review and I'll point out things along the way, inshallah. So let's start back at the beginning of Adars al-Ashir, the 10th lesson, a conversation between Hamid and Muhammad. Um, let me look at, let's see, let's have the Sayyids. Um, here we go. Let's have the Sayyids. Uh, let's have Dr. Muhsin be Hamid and Dr. Saira be Muhammad. And I'll interrupt you along the way just to point out a couple things here and there um, as a little bit of review. Amin. Man anta? Ana talibun bil jamiati. Good. Keep going. Anta Talibun Jadidun? Nam Anta Talibun Jadidun. Anna. Oh, Anna. Good. Nam Talibun Jadidun. And look at how, mashallah. So it's still there. Very good. Um, let me just ask a couple questions. Okay. So uh, let's translate these four lines. Okay. Go back now and translate them to English. And let's see. Let's see where we're at. <clears throat> Who are you, Mananta? 
I'm a student at the university. Very good, excellent. Are you new student? No. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm a new student. Fire, you're not a new student, but Hamid, on the other hand, or I'm sorry, Hamid <laughs> is. Yes, I'm a new student. Very good, okay, good. So let me just point out a couple things, okay? So um, one of the things that we're focusing on in this lesson is pronouns. Okay, and we talked about how there are different types of pronouns. There are subject pronouns, okay? I, you, he, she, we, right? Subject pronouns are going to be doing actions. They're going to be the subject of sentences. They're going to be the ones possessing things, right? Then we also, oh, scratch that last one. Yes? <laughs> and then we're also going to have possessive pronouns. Okay, so excuse me, I misspoke. Possessive pronouns, they are the ones that are going to be possessing things. His jacket, her pen, our book, you know, my class, right? And then finally, we're going to have uh, object pronouns, which in Arabic are not very distinct from the possessive pronouns. So when we have men enta, we realize that we're dealing here, here with a subject pronoun, enta being you. And we had learned in the course of our previous lessons, all of the subject pronouns, hua for singular masculine, uh, for singular masculine third person, hum for plural uh, third person, hia for feminine third person, our second person, meaning the person we're talking to pronouns, enta or nt, depending on the gender, you and you respectively, and entum, you all collectively for plural. And then for first person talking about either us individually or a group we belong to, ana, I, or nahnu, we. And we'll soon be seeing um, the other types of pronouns such as possessive pronouns. So that's very good. Um, let's continue going, you two, with Hamid and Mohammed. Min ain min aina anta aina mina hindi ma usmoka is my e is me it's me oh sorry it's masmoka uh. <clears throat> oh, masmoka so what is this is me muhammad is me muhammad very good. I'm going to stop you there because now we've got a couple new things as review. Okay, so min aina. Now we're going back to our question words, right? Aina was simply to say where. Min aina, literally from where. Okay, um, this is an archaic construction in English. We don't say from where are you or from where do you come. We say uh, where are you from, right? Uh, Enta again, subject pronoun. Ana, subject pronoun. Min al Hindi, very good job making sure that the word, or I should say the noun after min, is in the genitive case with the kasra. And then we come to Hamza Tulwasl. So we learned about Hamza Tulwasl, our fine friend here. Um, and the rule for pronouncing Hamza Tulwasl is that we pronounce it if it's the first thing that we say. And we do not pronounce it if it's not the first thing that we say. So we have those two examples right here in front of us. With Hamid, he's saying mesmuka because the Hamza al-wasl is not the first thing we are pronouncing. So the alif in ma connects directly to the seen. We completely skip over that mesmuka, which is okay. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. And then the response of Muhammad because he's beginning with a Hamza al-wasl is ismi ismi he now is pronouncing it like it were a normal hamza um because we have to quite simply arabic does not have consonant clusters like straight or strict or construction like we have in english and germanic languages um and so in order to avoid consonant clusters uh we give the hamza to the wassel a vowel when we're starting on it and which vowel we give, we're going to talk about later. I'm not going to go into that detail now. Um, the second important thing to notice in this little part is the 
second type of pronouns, and the most important type of pronouns for where we are in our curriculum, which is possessive pronouns, okay? So we have the same, we have the same noun here, ism. Ism means name, okay? And what we're doing to it is we are making it possessed, okay, by a possessive pronoun. Here, it's possessed by ke, which means your name, right? The corresponding possessive pronoun for you or yours, we should say, is simply a kef that is attached to the end of the word. Ismu ke, kitabu ke, qalamu ke, beitu ke, and so on and so on and so on until infinity and beyond. Um, what we have in Muhammad's statement is the ya, which is the possessive pronoun for mine, my, my name, right? So here he's saying, my name is Muhammad. This is a mubtada khabar, uh, ismi Muhammadun, okay? So here we have the same noun, ism, ismun, but it's now with an attached possessive pronoun here for your name, here for my name. And if you are curious, or if you recall the relationship between these two parts, we have kind of the bare um, noun here, ism, this will write for me. And then we have the possessive pronoun, okay? The relationship between these two things is mudaf, mudaf ilay. Right? It's a possessive construction, which makes sense if you think about it for a few seconds because it is a possessive pronoun. My name, your name. So if you're a grammar nerd like I am and you're wondering what position is ism in this sentence, ism is mudaf and the kaf is mudaf ilay. Someone would then ask, why is the mudaf ilay not ki with a kasra? And the answer to that is because that subject and object and possessive pronouns are mebni. They are fixed. They do not change their endings to reflect changes in grammar. So even though the ka is majrur, yes, it is in the genitive case, it's not going to show that because the ka here indicates that it is masculine. Whew, that was really um, probably a little bit too much <laughs> for the first lesson getting back into the swing of things. But alhamdulillah, for those who are interested, there it is. Good. Can you keep going, Hamid and Muhammad? One question. Yes, please. So we said Anna is I. Yes. Ismi, so it's wrong to say Anasmi Muhammad? Correct. Why is it incorrect? Because in what it would literally translate to in English is I, my name is Muhammad, right? Which just by ear, we can tell that that's not correct English. Why is it not correct English? Because What's the subject of the sentence? Is the subject of the sentence me? Or is it really my name? And the answer to that is that it's actually my name. What we're talking about, subject is my name, which is a separate entity from me. And what we're taught, uh, the information we're giving about that subject, which is the khabar or the predicate, is the what is that name? In this case, Muhammad. Oh. Is that Thank clear? You. Yes. Okay, alhamdulillah. Great question, though. Um, because when I taught your children this in Sunday school, every single one of them said that. Every single one of them wanted to say, Anna ismi Muhammad, because we're thinking about English word order. We're thinking my name, right? But in Arabic word order, what we're literally saying is name my, right? Name my Muhammad, right? And so we're kind of feel cheated we just have a yeah hanging out at the end. And we're like, wait a second. I didn't really say my name is. So we want to say another uh, pronoun in the beginning of the sentence to keep the English syntax. But no, the Arabic is different. The possessive pronoun comes after the noun in Arabic, whereas in English, the possessive pronoun would come before the noun, my name. Very good. Uh, yes, so continue on. It is men, that's correct. I was going to let them go and ask oh. them. 
later, but yes, you're right. That is men. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No problem at all. Oh. Cut to the chase. Yeah, okay. Keep going. So, Hua, finish, Tyra. Yeah, what is it? Hua. Hua Zamili. Very good. Yes. Zamili. It's correct? Yes, correct. Two more lines. Hua. Oh, Hua Yadan Minal Hind. La Hua Minal Yabani. Very good. Excellent. So let me pause and we'll we'll look at this. So we have Wa uh, and Sister Masarat brought up a very good point. Uh, she says it is not min, it is men. And so we would ask the question, how do we know? They did not give you a Kesra or a Fatah. So how are we able to tell whether it should be min or men? We know what they're talking about. They may be able to but I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So if we're one saying... Is context. Oh, sorry. Yes, continue. I think one is context. Right. Uh, because it's saying like this. But then also, if it says this boy, then it's like min, like from... Um, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Good. So um, you're right. And this is an important point. It's not completely incorrect ever, ever, ever to say min have it. There are certain scenarios where you could say min have from this, you know, if you're making an argument or stating your case or something like this. But the problem, like Sister Masarrat said, is the context, right? Tracking the conversation, okay, Hamid and Muhammad are talking about something. What are they talking about? They're kind of getting to know each other, right? So we have, where are you from? What's your name? Okay. And now we come to this sentence, which is an additional question, okay? The key to understanding the sentence is understanding this word, which was a new, vo new vocabulary word for this lesson, feta. And feta, as we had said previously, is a young man. Right? It's a young man. And ma'ak, we had learned a new preposition, ma'a, which means with. So ma'aka means with you okay so if we're kind of scanning the sentence we have to conclude that we're asking the identity of a person right um if we didn't scan the sentence and we didn't cheat and like look ahead a little bit we have another clue another clue is what right because he just asked what he just asked, what's your name? Mesmuka. He asked for the identity of the person that he was talking to. Woman, right? Does it, make, does it make sense to put wa, to put and, if he's going to now ask something completely different, like where? No, he's also going to ask about the identity. So same question, but uh, from a different person or the identity of a different person who happens to also be there present. Woman had al Patalavi Maaka. And who is this young man? He who is with you or who is with you. Good stuff. Right? So Arabic, uh, much more than English, much more than English, is dependent upon context and expects you to read between the lines. Right? One of the crazy things, like if you there's a whole um genre of literature in fiqh, which are muqtasarat. Um, they're basically like people who are writing fifth books as densely condensed as possible, as succinctly as possible. And the way that they do this is they're using pronouns and they're not going to refer back to the nouns that they refer to. And so in Arabic, they expect you to keep track of these things in your head. What's the difference between this and that? Well, this is feminine and that's masculine. And so we don't need to state the noun again because the possessive pronouns will reflect that, right? For an English speaker, I still find that very difficult to keep track of, to be honest, right? So, who is this young man? Oh, who is this young man? Yep, you got it, right? So it's something to keep in mind going forward that Arabic is very, very uh, context rich. It assumes that you're going to be keeping track of all these sorts of relationships maybe a little bit more carefully than you would have to in English. Um, 
And so the response was, huwa zamili. And zamil, we had learned previously, is a new vocabulary word for a colleague or a classmate. And so now, zamili, that's the possessive construction. Are you saying, my classmate? He is my classmate. Then Hamid asked, ahua, he's asking a question about him, right? Huwa, and this is a very good for uh, Dr. Muhsin's previous question about differentiating between the subject pronoun and the possessive pronoun. Now he's going to ask a question not about something that belongs to this young man, which would require a possessive pronoun. He's going to ask something about him directly. Ahua, aidon, aidon meaning also. Min al Hindi is he also from Hind. And just as we recognize that this has to be men up here. Min al Hindi, right? Min al Hindi, yes, correct. Thank you. Oh. Then it will be, uh, what am I saying here? Uh, we recognize that it's Min al Hindi and it couldn't possibly be men al Hindi, right? Because of the context. Excellent. Um, very, very good. And the response, la huwa min al yabani. Excellent work. Let's you two finish out the page. And once we cross over the page, we'll get some. Um, sorry, yeah. can I just ask something? Yes, of course. What, what if you weren't saying, uh, you know. Mm. Go ahead. Sorry, what's your question? Okay. Well. You know it's men because um, if there was no Anna here, okay, if there was no pronoun and you just you, all you had was Min al Hind, yes, uh, but then you wanted to say someone who is Indian, would that word be different? Yes, it would. Um, what would it be then? It would be Hindi, and oh, okay, right? We haven't gotten there yet. This there is, would be a ya at the end, yes, and that's a different, oh, okay. that's a different ya than okay. possessive pronoun. So there is a yeah that we will learn later on, not learning it now at all. Okay, back to me. That will be um, indicative of, let's say we use it for nationality. We use it for someone who is from something, right? So in the Emri, things like this. But yes, we'll get into that later. That's a good question. Different ways to say something. Good, so let's go back to Hamid uh, with asking about this particular person's name. Masma. Um, okay. Is, 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 no. Sorry, I don't know the correct way to say it. It's okay, no problem. Try your best and I'll go over it. Okay, the last one. Ma ya Very good. Okay, well, let's stop there for a second. Okay, so here we have the same sort of thing that we had earlier in that we have a Hamza to the Wassel, one of them in the beginning of our speech and one of them not. So you guys did a great job. You jumped over knowing that this had to connect directly to the, the scene in ism. Okay. And you also correctly said that this is is, ism as well, uh, because it has to have a vowel. Now, the, the question we have to ask is, what haraka is the meme going to get? In both of these, we have ism, and we know that the scene has a what is the meme going to have and why? Is it going to have a bumma? Is it going to, both of you gave it a fetha. Um, is it going to have a fetha? Is it going to have a kesra? And why? It would have a kesra. It would have a kesra. Kesra, kesra, yes. kesra, kesra yeah. yes. Why would it? Because Mes the first letter ha the first letter doesn't have a dhamma. So it would be mesmihi? Sorry? In this one, in this one here, and in this one here. You're saying that the meme. I'm talking about the. Oh, meme. sorry. Is if it's is is mihi, then it would be kasra. Okay. If it's just is mihi, but if it's mas muhu. 
Okay. Why is it mesmuhu and not mesmihi? Sounds right to me. Sounds right to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Mashallah. Hey, if we're at that level of Arabic, alhamdulillah. Okay. I guess I can take over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're <laughs> Pass out. No, alhamdulillah. You're half right and you're half wrong. Okay. So this is with a dhamma. Masmuhu. Okay. Why? We're, we have to ask ourselves, what type of sentence is this? Okay. Or... You know, even questions, they still fit within the jumla ismiya, jumla fi'liya dichotomy, right? This is a jumla ismi. And we know that the default status ruling, whatever you want to say, state of the parts of a jumla ismiya is that they are marfu'a, which is usually expressed by a dhamma. Unless there happens something else to a word that moves it away from that to something else, such as a hafjar, a preposition, min, or a possessive relationship, mudaf, mudaf, ilay, or something like that, okay? If we wanted to tease out, and I think previously we had, I had tried to stress that with questions, it's tricky because questions, um, they don't, it's hard to look at them and recognize the same mubtada khabar that we had done so well when it was uh, an affirmative sentence. If we want to tease it out, we have to rearrange the parts and we have to look at what it is we're trying to say here. So the question is, in translation, what is his name? Okay. If we were to make a statement to answer that question, then it would be, his name is X, right? We actually, we have that in the next line. Ismuhu Hamza. I just gave away the answer. Um, so the proper order of this, if it were a sentence, it begins with Ismuhu or yes, Ismuhu. And pardon me, I forgot my mouse. And so my writing is very, writing with one of those pads, those finger pads. And so the writing is very bad. Um, ismuhu ma. This is the original question. This is the mubtada, ismuhu, because it's the subject. It's what we want to know. And ma, what is the, what is the information about that subject? That is the predicate. That's the khabar. Okay. However, as we've said time and time again in Arabic, we put the part that we're questioning first, which is why ma jumps ahead to be mesmuhu. But this has to be a dhamma on the meme. Because it is mubtada. Because it is part of the jumla ismi. Ismuhu. Secondly, secondly, the who has to be with the dhamma because this here is a possessive pronoun. It is fixed. So even if, even if hypothetically we were in some sort of situation where we had isma, like if it were the, um, the uh, object of a verb, it's possible that we could have ismahu, right? It is. If this were the object of a verb, the meme would have a fetha, but the ha is always going to have a bumma. Always, 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 because it is a pronoun and pronouns are fixed. They are mibni. The same reason why earlier, <coughs> excuse me, we can't change ka to ki, right? For reasons other than gender. Because ka is fixed, it means you masculine. It's never going to be ki if we're talking about a male. The same thing down here. This is never going to be ha. It's always going to be hu, whether it's ismuhu or ismahu. That's another thing entirely. But hu is fixed. Okay, that brings us down to the second part. Does everybody understand that? Just from mesmuhu, before we get into ismuhu hamza. Yes. Okay. Ismuhu Hamza, Sister Masarat brought a, a correct rule in the wrong place. Okay. So she applied the rule of Hamza to Wassel that's specific to verbs and she applied it to a noun. Okay. If we have a verb that begins with a Hamza to Wassel, uh, so for example, there's a um, if ta'ala. Okay, this is a verb, kind of like a nonsense verb. 
Ukutulu Yusuf. If ta'ala, then we look at the third letter, right? We look at the third letter and we work backwards. We work backwards and ascertain that this has to be a kasra because it's not a bum. However, we're not in that area of Arabic grammar. We're dealing with nouns. And nouns, the default is that it's going to be with a kasra. Ism, if name, the number two. Imra'a for a woman, right? And so on and so forth. Um, I'm sorry, I did not hear what, what the reference to Surah Yusuf was. Sorry, I thought you were looking for a verb that began with uh, a dhamma, so that I just gave you an oh, example. I see, I see. Right, like udkhul, right? Like, udkhul would yeah, be... Yeah, I said uqtulu uh, yusuf. Yes, uqtulu, right, from qatala yaqtulu, right? Uqtul, right, exactly. This would be an example because now we're talking about verbs, right? So that is correct. How do we determine how to pronounce the hamzatul wasl with verbs? Correct. This is not a verb. It's, an, it's a noun. And so the default is going to be kasra. Good. Ismuhu, because this is our subject. This is our mubtada. This is what we're talking about. Ismuhu, and the hu is fixed again. Hamzatu. Hamzatu, that's the information about the subject that we're looking for. We wondered what his name was. His name is the subject. The information about that subject, meaning what it is, is khabar marfu' with dhamma hamzatu. And finally, we have ma lughatuka ya muhammadu. And we had learned before, if there is a name that is after the ya, which is harf al nida, the uh, vocative particle, you're calling out somebody, ya muhammad, then it drops the tanween. Instead of ya muhammadun, normally it's muhammadun, it becomes ya muhammadu. And lughatun is the original word, lughatun meaning language. And so we have Lugha to Ka. What is your language, O oh Muhammad? And that takes us to the end of the page. That was a nice, invigorating review session. Uh, I think for the interest of time, we will stop here and continue on with the harder page two on Saturday morning at 11 Eastern time, inshallah ta'ala. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, good to get back into the swing of things. MashaAllah, everybody's doing great. You, it's still with you. It's still there, MashaAllah. That wasn't so painful. And it will come back with more and more practice. So keep at it, inshallah ta'ala. And I will see you Saturday, if not sooner, inshallah. Tharika wallahu ta'ala. A'lam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum